Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about Flamingo, which is a vision language foundation model for few shot learning. So let's get started. What tasks can Flamingo models do? Right. So Flamingo models can do various kinds of tasks like image captioning, video captioning, or even uh, you know visual question answering. So here are some examples. So you know you have an image here. Uh, uh, in fact, the way the Flamingo models take prompts is basically a multimodal prompting with few shot examples. So you basically take an image and you essentially pass its caption, take another image, pass its caption, and then basically provide a third image and then say this is what. So you basically want to come up with a nice caption here, right? And that is what Flamingo models are good for. So for example, here you have mentioned that this is a chinchilla. They are mainly found in Chile. This is a Shiba. They are very popular in Japan. So this is now, you know, the Flamingo model uh, understands from the two examples what is the kind of output that it must provide and therefore comes up with this nice completion. This is a Flamingo they are found in the Caribbean and South America. Right? Similarly, there is this another example. You basically give some an image and then you say, what is the title of this painting? Answer the hallucinogenic uh, toreador, right? And then give another painting and then you give a similar question and answer. So and then you give the third painting and you just put out the question and say answer colon and then it comes up with the correct answer. So this is the example of vision question answering. Right. The third one is an example of a video captioning or a video question answering kind of scenario. So you pass on a video represented using five frames here and then a question and then you just say answer colon and then it can actually come up with the right answer. Now, of course, even for video question answering, you can do few short prompting by passing in two examples, uh, and then you can provide this video along with the question and expect it to provide, uh, expect it to generate the right answer. Okay. Flamingo models have also been uh, found to perform really well on dialogue, multimodal dialogue kind of a setting. So, for example, you can give this image, and then you can say, uh, and then the model can say, this is a picture of two teddy bears on the moon. And then you can ask as a user, what are they doing? They are having a conversation. What object are they looking? Are they using? It looks like a computer. Is it surprising? Yes, it is surprising. Why is this? Uh, why is the picture surprising? Well, because teddy bears are not usually found on the moon. Okay. Similarly, here is another example. You can actually provide three pictures this time, and then you can say what is the more common thing about these three images. They're all flamingos, and then what's the difference between these three images? The first one is a cartoon, as you can see. The second one is a real flamingo. Third one is a 3D model of a flamingo, right? So very nice descriptive answer. Okay. So now, uh, you know, so, so basically in short, what are flamingo models? Well, they are foundational vision language models specifically, uh, you know, experimented with and found to be really good at image captioning, video captioning, image question answering, video question answering, and also, as you noticed, multimodal chatting. Right? So what is the architecture of flamingo models? Now, the architecture uh, basically uh, is, is, as you can see here, right? So essentially, um, uh, as, as we noticed, the input basically comprises of image, some text, another image, some text, third image, and then some text and so on. Okay, So you basically take this input and then you take the uh, image part from this input and you feed it to vision encoders. You take the text part and you feed it to yet another module and we'll talk about that module later. But take the image part, feed it to vision encoders. Remember these vision encoders are frozen. So they are pre-trained and frozen. Um, in fact, they are pre-trained ResNet models. So they are pre-trained ResNet models and they are not really trained as part of the Flamingo model training. Okay. So after you take those vision uh, encoder outputs, now they can be of different sizes depending on what you're passing as input. Uh, you know, whether you're passing images of what sizes or you're passing videos with multiple frames in them. So therefore the outputs of vision encoder module could be very different, uh, could be of different sizes. And therefore you have these perceiver resampler module so as to basically get a fixed size output from these, uh, from these uh, uh, vision, uh, you know, from, uh, you know from, from the vision part. Now, uh, to process the text, what you have is a large language model. So it's basically a language model. As you can see, this is the first language model block. This is the nth language model block. So it's practically a transformer-based model that they use. Okay. However, what they do is to insert these gated cross-attention dense layers in between, or rather after every, uh, after every language model layer. Okay. So essentially, as you see, there's this first gated uh, cross-attention dense layer just before the first LM block, the nth gated cross-attention dense layer just before the nth language model block. Okay. So what is cross-attention? Well, cross-attention just means that you are taking uh, uh, the text as input and then you are essentially using 
you know, uh, uh, the vision part so as to influence uh, the keys and the values uh, uh, or other the, the keys, uh, you know, uh, some of those QKBs, right? So essentially the standard cross attention basically means that you have two inputs and then you form keys and values from one of the input, the uh, queries from the other input, and that basically provides you the overall uh, vision attended text representations. Okay, so that's basically what you get at the end of this entire processing. So when you train the Flamingo model, what you end up training is basically these uh, gated cross attention dense layers and also the perceiver resampler modules. You keep the vision encoder and the language model block frozen. Okay. So that's that. Now, uh, uh, a little more detail about these different blocks, right? So this one basically shows what happens in every um, in every uh, in every uh, block in the language model site, right? So as we said, there is a language modeling layer, but then before that, there is this gated cross attention dense layer. Right? So as you can observe, there is the language input coming from here. There is the vision input coming from there. So this vision input, of course, is coming from the perceiver resampler. Right? And then there is cross attention, which is going on. So there's a cross attention layer, which basically takes these keys and values, as I was talking about from the vision side, and then takes the language, uh, the, the, the queries from the language side. So there's of course also a, um, a, a residual uh, connection around that. And then there is a feed forward layer. It's called gated cross attention layer because it has this 10 hyperbolic gating around there. Okay. Um, so once that is done, then there is uh, then these layers, these blue colored layers are the standard language modeling layer, the standard self-attention sublayer and the feed forward sublayer uh, connected uh, right on top of the gated cross attention dense layers. Now that's the detail about that part. Now let's look at what this perceiver resampler guy is doing. So that's basically mentioned here. So uh, remember you have these images or image frames. If it's a video, right? You basically get uh, uh, out, uh, get get patch representations for each of them. So it's basically, you know, uh, it's not really patches from the original input, original input image because it's a, uh, uh, they use a ResNet model. So they essentially get some. Uh, let's say fourth layer, fifth layer from the ResNet, uh, or some layers from the ResNet model, they essentially get an output. Um, and then uh, to each of those outputs, they also associate position embeddings. And then they flatten them, so that basically becomes your visual input. Okay, That's basically visual features as mined uh, from the ResNet model and also associated with the position embedding. Okay, Now that's your variable sized input. Remember, this is not fixed in size, this is variable sized. Now on the other hand, just like uh, you know, in other recent models, what they also do is to use a fixed number of latent queries. Okay, so these are like fixed size vectors. Let's consider them as 768 sized vectors, each of them 768 size, and there are like five of them here, as it is shown here. This five is a hyperparameter. So what this perceiver resampler guy is going to do is to basically take as many inputs as you want to provide here, but then convert them into five vectors. That's it. Okay. And the way it does is by learning these five vectors. You randomly initialize these five vectors, give it as input here, and then you have a attention layer. This attention layer basically, uh, you know, uh, uh, computes self attention over uh, this combined representation, this combined, uh, you know, concatenation of uh, the visual features as mined by your ResNet model and these learned latent queries, learned latent queries. Okay, so, the, so this is the cross attention thing. So basically, the keys and the values come from uh, a combination of XF and X, where XF are these vision features and X is this learned latent queries and the queries come from uh, queries are basically these learned latent queries. Okay. So of course it's also followed by the feed forward layer and then you do several layers of this perceiver resampler and finally basically get a five sized output. Okay. So notice that the attention here is very interesting. So of course the cross attention, but then one important thing to notice is that uh, our input basically contains a uh, remember of, uh, uh, you know, of, of, uh, uh, images. So these are the images that go there. So images from various, if, if it's a video, then these are like image frames. If it's just a, a, a bunch of images, one or two images, you know, that basically is just a single image that goes to each of those perceiver resampler blocks. Okay. So that's that. Now, one last thing that is interesting in this model is that uh, when you compute this uh, gated cross attention in the, uh, you know, in this layer, uh, uh, so, uh, so what is done um, is basically uh, you uh, ensure the model attends to the visual tokens of the image that appeared just before. Okay, so the idea is that the processed, uh, the way the process text is provided to this language modeling part is that you give the image one, then you have the text one, image two, text two, image three, and then you have like the prompt, right? 
So uh, each of these text tokens basically just uh, has attention over, of course, all the other text tokens, but only over the previous image, only over the previous image. So for example, this particular, this token is going to only attend over this image and not over the first image. Okay. So that's the uh, that's the interesting part. I mean, and that makes sense as well. I mean, each text token, each text token should really uh, have attention with respect to the image um, for which it is applicable, right? So that makes sense. So that's the architecture of the Flamingo models. Now, the Flamingo models were pre-trained using three different data sets: the uh, popular M3W data set, the multimodal massive web data set, which comprise of interleaved image and text. Right. It's also pre-trained over two data sets that they created themselves. So, uh, or rather, you know, over pairs of image and uh, video, uh, image or video and text. So they made use of the pop uh, already available aligned data set, and these two data sets, LTIP and VTP, are data sets that they themselves created. Okay. So, so in some ways, if you really want to think about it, it's like four different data sets: the M3W data set, which is already existing, and aligned data set already existing, and they created the LTIP and VTP data sets using which, uh, you know. Uh, they they pretend this model. These data sets practically contain like image text pairs or video text pairs, basically. Okay. So how do Flamingo models perform? Now, as you notice, uh, you know uh, on the left side, this performance relative to uh, state of the art models, fine tuned state of the art models. And on the x-axis, you notice several different data sets. Uh, some of them are question answering data sets. Some of them are captioning data sets. Some of them involve video. Some of them involve images as input. Okay. So. So what you observe is that uh, Flamingo 80 billion, so by the way, they basically train Flamingo models of three different sizes, 3 billion, 9 billion, and 80 billion. So yes, the largest model is actually pretty huge, right? Uh, and they pretend it using 32 shots. So basically, for a few short prompting, they essentially use 30 different shots, okay? 30 different examples. And uh, as you can notice, these Flamingo models outperform state-of-the-art fine-tuned models on six of these 16 tasks with no fine-tuning, okay? So, uh, if you don't fine tune the Flamingo models at all, you basically uh, find that Flamingo models can actually outperform fine tuned models in six of the 16 tasks. Okay, for the nine of these tasks, basically uh, Flamingo models, uh, you know, if you basically do few short prompting, you essentially observe again. You don't fine tune these Flamingo models; just do few short prompting. You basically observe that uh, on nine of these tasks, uh, essentially the Flamingo models can outperform uh, the existing state of the art. So of course, uh, th this is about Flamingo 80 billion model. It's a um, sumo model, huge size, huge size model. Uh, but uh, you know, if you basically um, uh, on on the right hand side, you see a chart which basically shows you what happens if you look at the other size of the model. So 3 billion model is not that great. Well, uh, so the aggregated performance across all of these tasks on the left side is basically shown here on the y-axis. And here also number of shots are shown. So essentially 32 shots is important. Of course, with 16 shots, you got al get almost similar accuracy, but then you get much lower accuracy with eight shots or lesser number of shots, okay? So, so doing this few shot prompting is super important as the Flamingo, in, in, you know, especially as far as the Flamingo models go. Uh, and uh, clearly the larger the size of the model, the better the accuracy that you obtain. Okay, so in short, in this video, I talked about Flamingo models. They're available in three different sizes, 3 billion, 9 billion, and 80 billion. Uh, they are foundational vision language models. Of course, you know this is 2022, so in 2023, many other vision language models came up, uh, came came up, right? Which which perform better than Flamingo, but uh, in general, in Flamingo models, the architecture is such that they can they have this nice uh, uh, way to bridge powerful pre-trained uh, vision only ResNet kind of models with language only transformed kind of models. Okay. Uh, their architecture can also handle sequences of arbitrarily uh, interleaved vision and language uh, and, and text data thanks to the perceiver resampler. Um, they can also ingest images or videos as inputs. And finally, they show strong few shot results on image question answering, video question answering, image captioning, video, video captioning. Uh, and they also show some results on multimodal chatting. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my research on my homepage. Thank you.